So we've made it to the Elite Eight. And as you can see, there's only two of us. That's because after Brian's wild card, we put him in timeout for 48 hours. Uh, and he's no longer allowed to be a uh, part of this. But really, Brian is a very busy person. He's working on his PhD. He's got a family. He's a loving, caring dad, I think. I don't know. Rachel speaks highly of him from time to time. Uh, so he was kind enough to do them and then bring in the answers here which we will see what they are coming up and i'm excited for that so chuck and i are going to go through the elite eight and we are going to taste them uh give our answers and then we've got brian's answers right here to It'll be the uh, tiebreaker yeah be maybe. the tiebreaker maybe the voice of reason i don't know we'll see uh some voice and then he will be back for the final four and the championship round uh this episode will already have aired, but the real reason, main reason he's not here is uh, he is going to make everything possible to be at our Maker's Mark live stream, which I will link above because that will have already happened, where we tried all four of the DNA series. And I've been waiting for this for four months, and so I'm super excited. Does entry proof matter? Yeah, we will find out. Or we did find out by the time this is live. We already know. So, yeah. So you should watch that and find out too. So... So the first matchup of the Elite Eight is Heaven Hill from Brian versus New Riff from Chuck. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens. So the big, the old school big boy on the block versus the new one. Versus literally the new Riff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this Heaven Hill product, it's just like I, you could... It's like Brian slipped in a Jim Beam. Yeah, I really think he did. It's a subtle, nutty graininess. Yep. Yeah, and that to me just carries through the palate. Yeah. A little, I'm getting a little bit more of like a hay yeah, after the palate on this one tonight than I was, I think, in round one. Yeah, it's definitely like uh, it's nutty to like wet hay. So you get some yeah. nuttiness on the nose and then it just goes wet hay. Definitely has to be youthful. Like if I had to go there, I feel like it is. It's definitely lower proof. Knowing Heaven Hill, knowing Brian, it makes me think it's an Evan Williams, maybe bottled and bond, maybe just black label. I was like, but, I don't think this is bottled and bond. So, but yeah, that's what I think it is. It's not bad. By no means is it the best heaven hill product i've ever had but i mean i'm gonna be honest i think this is a mixer yeah i'd agree mm -hmm. if you get any sweetness maybe just a little butterscotch but man the, those the nutty grain hay if i was and a horse not, i'd like this yeah and there's not a long finish on it like it's it's a nice mellow with a little bit of baking spice on the end so yeah i guess in lower proof less than 100 and then you just smell the new riff oh my word <laughs> and it is caramel like caramel popcorn <sighs> with cream is, i mean every time you every time you get something different don't you it's like a yeah this is the first time I think I've smelled it, and I get like honeydew melon. I really do. I finally get some little bit of melon notes in the in the nose. That, that was the, in that description. The, yeah. the I mean the oh was it master taster the not master taster <laughs> but the the bourbon steward that was it. What, what was that look for? You just finally admitted what bottle this is. <laughs> Gosh dang it! <laughs> you got me. I mean, I knew what it was. But. I was going to say, come on. You did. I want to say it was in our best of and you did yeah. not know what it was. Well, I had shame on you. Through, I hadn't gone through two bottles <laughs> by then. Yeah, my word. I get a little like cola cream soda ish. Yeah. 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 It, I've always said definitely. like butter toffee, just like a brown yeah. butter. Like peanut brittle and then some some caramel or uh, some cream soda. And like I said, I get a little hint of melon in there this time. Yeah. And then the palate just gives you this, this pleasant smoky char with that sweet. Yeah. 
It's like this would go good on any type of barbecue. Just like yeah, yeah. I'm going to base my brisket in New Riff bourbon. I think I might have to. That yeah. actually good, I yeah. haven't used. I'll send you a, another bottle of Brian's. He can, he can lose two bottles. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Salt. Uh, okay, wait. I'm ready. Yeah, no doubt. New Riff. Yeah, no doubt. New Riff. Like it's um, not even close. Mm-hmm. The youthful graining. Like I said, mixer at best for on my shelf. Although, I mean, a mixer for me is like Knob Creek. Yeah. Uh, single barrel or. But. Yeah, but Knob Creek single barrel would be way better than that. So I think that's that what would I mean. Be a, right? Yeah. That wouldn't be on your shelf, I think, is what we're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm going. All right. So we both say New Rift, but we'll see what Brian says. Hey. And survey says. Oh, I, can't, I can't read that. Uh, there we go. There we go. New Rift. Rift. Good job, Brian. We are so proud of you, which means. <sighs> I get to see his Heaven Hill release. Oh, we were right. I still can't see that. Oh, there we go. But that was Bottle and Bond? That is Evan Williams' Bottle and Bond. Man. So I guess it's been a while since I had the Bottle and Bond. I didn't. Hmm. I mean, that's normally, like, that was a go-to in the, I mean, for 20 bucks or 25 Yeah. Although I think for me in that price range, I've switched to Wild Turkey 101. Uh, that's mm-hmm. been, my, been my go-to. But props to Brian doing what Brian does well, which is he found a bottle that is is decent, that is readily available. Like you're, a lot of people aren't going to ever see a Henry McKenna. Pretty much everyone can find Evan Williams bottles and bottles. Yep. All right. So the next round on the we'll call it the east west side of the bracket for the Elite Eight is Jim Beam versus Maker's Mark. So once again, mm-hmm. it's kind of old school versus new school uh who's the new school makers like makers have been makers really? has been around for a while but like popularity wise is oh, okay. a lot newer than uh beam and i would say really what this is is two very overlooked bourbons like people poo poo on both jim beam stuff and Makers. yeah because they think of jim beam white label right yeah so here are two very high quality bourbons that are usually overlooked and we'll see which one goes out to the final four. All right. Beam product here. Oh yeah. That's beam. Ooh, light on the nose. Yeah, it is light on the nose, but you do get uh, like roasted peanuts on the back there. Very ever so slightly. But see, that's kind of classic beam too. Like mm-hmm. for me, the Booker's last year, uh, which batch helped me? Is it the uh, green Bardstown? batch? Bardstown. Yeah. The, that was, would have been probably our best whiskey of the year had it had a little bit more nose. Yeah. Um, palette and finish, it took it, but it lacked a little bit on the nose. And that's what, to me, this one mm-hmm. kind of similar on the profile. But then man, when you sip it, it just, coats the mouth super viscous oily super complex Mm. depth uh you're getting oak you're getting leather you're getting uh caramel vanilla you're just getting all these very traditional bourbon notes that it's just super thick and just coats that mouth and then it goes back to a nice peppery finish that just lingers but it's not too much yeah I mean, you said it well. I think oak and uh, nutty uh, and caramel dominate that palate. Um, and even to me, some of that sweetness carries through that that spicy finish. And it's not an overly powerful pepper spice. It's a really nice, consistent mm-hmm. finish, um, but not overly done. So yeah. that's, uh, I mean, shoot. The, really, the nose is the only knock on this for me. Yeah, it's incredibly well-balanced start to finish uh, but yeah i'm with you the nose is just a a little a little lacking and, and i it's got what i it's that sensation in the mouth and a little bit of that's just the like the the mouth feel and how it coats the so the creaminess but it's it's got this like a it's kind of like when you drink a soda or a carbonated beverage it just comes like it's got this little tingly all around the yeah. the mouth that's to me, a little bit characteristic along with the nuttiness of, of, uh, of like bookers or, or mm-hmm. bean products. Yeah. Definitely. It's kind of pleasant. 
yeah and it's one of those that just like makes you want to go back for more and just start the whole process over yeah for sure makers i get green apple like heavy that's weird yeah normally cherry right it's uh Mm -hmm. all right now i'm getting because we had it the other day not too long ago like the uh um danish cheese or not the cheese danish but the cherry danishes cherry, that, yeah that uh cherry sauce basically i want to say it's like jam but yep. it's really not just that's what it smells like sugar yeah, i get a tons of cherry vanilla uh combo yeah with maybe a little bit of a subtle oak grain in the back oak and grain oak's not i understand oak's not a grain <laughs> If anybody understood that, that would be you. Just clarifying. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting decision. Finishes clearly goes to the beam. Mm -hmm. uh, The maker's finish is short, to say the least. Well, in the palette, I get a little bit of hay. Mm hmm. I was going to say the palate, like it goes from this great nose to I sip the palate and there's that first period of like just wateriness. There's, there's no mm-hmm. flavors at first. And then you finally, I, so I guess that what all that means is the, it's not getting anything of the front of our tongue on the taste buds. And then it's hitting everything on the side and the back of the taste buds. Um, but yeah, there's just that period of like nothing. And I'm like, what? And then there it comes in. Yep. Again, I'm ready. I am you want me to go first? Go for it. I'm going beam. Like, yeah, I, I love the nose on the makers, uh, but literally, the I mean, the palette and the finish on the beam are so much better than the makers. Um, but to be fair, I mean, I know that what I submitted as the makers, uh, that was my draft pick. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not terribly surprised. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going the Jim Beam and the Makers is great. It's really good uh, by itself or matched up against somebody else. It probably, it might've gone on, but the Beam is just so complex. Uh, Hits multiple taste buds and parts of your palate. Uh, Whereas I feel like the Makers is maybe a two note bourbon. Uh, So just on all of that, definitely have to go Beam. All right. Well, so I get to reveal this. Hold and again, on, I said on, I wasn't. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh we, well, yeah, we got to know what Brian said first. Yeah, we got to know Brian. So, Brian, oh, buddy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Jim B. It's unanimous. Look at that. The man is doing well. What do we need him for? He's validating everything. I'm, I'm proud of him. <laughs> All right. So. What makers did you send? Because we thought it was 101. So, yeah, and you guys are totally wrong. Um, I mean, I had to go budget here for other reasons. I mean, partly, yeah. Um, well, for other reasons. So we I can't say too much at this point, but this is just standard makers. I'm honestly shocked this made it through round one. Well, it was, I mean, it was going against very old Barton. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean true yeah. <laughs> that's how we got there <laughs> yeah but i thought yeah. you know barton had a lot of other you know it from the makers distillery obviously if i was just going to the best makers i wouldn't have chose this yeah i would have gone one of the limited releases um even I, you know i tried i tried 46 yeah um as my wild card actually oh but I, I ended up putting through the the four roses. So, yeah. but in in this case, I needed the budget. So I, got you. I had to go. I had to go cheat. I made I made a couple choices for budget too. Yeah, so. yeah. So clearly the winner. Beam moving on. Not disappointed by that. No, not at all. Jim Beam final four. Yep. So that concludes the east west side of our bracket. And Thursday we will be releasing the south midwest side to completely round out the final four uh so stay tuned and we'll see you next time stay neat power bourbon